Let's go ahead and jump into a dialogue here so we can get an idea of how this works. So today we're going to have two dialogue practices. One is in a family, give you a kind of an idea of how these strategies work, and one is in a business. So follow along with me in your uh, textbook. So we have Fred and Jane again. So they're going to decide a strategy for buying a car. So Fred says, this weekend we should go ahead and buy the new car. Now everybody knows buying a car you have to have a negotiation, right? So let's talk about this. Jane says, you mean the one we saw at the Toyota car dealer? And Fred says, yes. I have the salesperson's business card here. His name is Bill, but the price is more than we can afford. So remember we talked about price in unit two and the price that the salesperson is asking for is more than Fred is willing to pay. Jane says, we should make an offer that is 20% below the list price. And Fred responds, I don't think Bill the salesperson will like that very much. He told me the price was the bottom line, the lowest price possible, right? Jane says, I don't care if he likes it. Every dollar we save on the car, we can use for buying gas. So Jane is very clear. She wants to stick to this price because she can transfer that money to buy something else of value. Fred says, an alternative is, we can buy my brother's car. He told me he's going to replace his car already. And Jane says, he just bought that car last year. He seems to change cars every year. Fred responds, he even gave me a quote already. Should I offer him 20% less? Now here's a little, a little bit funny, right? So Fred is saying, I have a, my brother selling his car. May we get his car because the Toyota car maybe is too expensive. It's over our price that we set the limit on that was our goal we we don't want to go over that and so Jane says well okay let's think about something else so everybody seems to be moving forward and then uh, Fred says well should I ask for 20% from my brother 20% discount from my brother and of course that's kind of funny right would you ask your brother for a 20% discount maybe you would but I think a lot of people think, well, that's kind of hard to do. Why is that hard to do? Well, he's your brother. You don't want to cause trouble. You don't want to cause bad feelings. So here we have the two questions, right? We're kind of ending up with the two questions. Right now we're facing the question of, well, how important is that relationship? And the other question, how important is it for you to get that price, right? Let's jump back here. Jane says, of course not. If we pressure him on price, he may not help us paint the house this summer. Ah, so we don't want to pressure your brother on price because he's already going to do us a favor. So we want to have a good relationship with him. Fred says, oh yeah, so we want to stay on his good side. We want to stay friends with him over a long term, so we don't want to pressure him. And Jane agrees with that. Right. So even though they don't speak about it, they don't talk about it openly, they've basically looked at these two questions. How important is this negotiation now? And we found out that the Toyota dealer, that price is over Fred's goal. And Jane is very clear, you must get 20% and that's it, she's not going to change. On the other hand, if it's bought from your brother, we buy the car from your brother, well, how important is that relationship? That relationship may be more important, so we may not have to ask for that 20% discount from there also. Now, of course, we don't know the price, we don't know the detail, it's just a general example. Relationships in negotiation can actually be very important to consider. So let's look at a business situation, a business context. And here we have a strategy planning meeting. So this is a meeting before negotiation. We're going to try to think of what is our strategy. So Fred says, now that we have our goals clear, we need to decide on which strategy to emphasize. Remember from unit number two, Fred was talking about the uh, goal package. So now that we have the goal package clear, we need to think about the strategy. And Bill says, 
Isn't the strategy always the same? Make the most profit. That's what most people think, right? Just get the lowest you can, lowest price you can, the best deal you can. Fred says, that would be true if we want to compete with the other side or if they just accommodate our demands. I think this deal is very important for Zeno. So they won't just give us what we want. Now that's a bit of a long sentence, but what's it trying to say? Uh, Fred's trying to say, yeah, right. It's easy to say, just get what you want, right? Just get what you want. That's the strategy. But the problem with that is the other side wants something too. Unless they're just going to give us what we want, unless they're just going to compromise on everything, uh, that strategy is not going to really work too good. So you can, you can say that, I'm just going to get the lowest. But what is the lowest and what does it mean to you? And then it's very complicated. So that's overly simplistic and uh, Fred says so. Bill says, is there an acceptable alternative? Can we do something else that'll work out? And Fred responds, well, if Zeno Company feels we are making more profit while they are losing money, they may avoid negotiating with us. Remember what we said at the beginning of this class, and that is to have a negotiation, you really need to have two things. One is something in common. That means something you're working together. In this case, if we're buying from Zeno, Zeno wants to sell, we want to buy, we want to sell their product in the market, we want to make a profit, they want to make a profit. It's something in common. You have to have some, something different also. So that's number two. Number one, something in common. Number two, something different. But if that difference is too big, then Zeno will just walk away. They'll say it's not worth it. So how do we include them, keep them interested in the negotiation? Not so easy. And Bill says, you mean they will withdraw, withdraw, just drop out of the negotiation? And Fred says, that is one strategy. On the other hand, if they think they can beat us trying to get the best price, they will compete. So of course we want to keep them in the negotiation. Isn't that good? Bill says and Fred responds, competing can make it hard to cooperate in the future. That's that relationship thing. We will oppose everything they want and they will oppose everything we want. Even if we win, Zeno may be very angry over the negotiation. So here we're talking about the relationship. Bill says, maybe we don't need Zeno in the future. And Fred responds, if we have a good alternative, you could be right. Right now, however, Zeno is the best supplier we have. So now we're asking, how important is this right now? How important is this Zeno company to us right now? Well, if we have other suppliers, like five suppliers, and Zeno is just one supplier, we can go ask the other five suppliers for a better price. So if we have some other supplier with a better price, well then, we don't need to worry about Zeno being angry at us. We don't care. So we don't need to worry about the relationship. However, if Zeno has something special, like special quality, a special production technique, where they can produce in a very short time, where they give us some kind of special offer, a special opportunity, or they have a product we just cannot buy anywhere else, then maybe we really need Zeno over the long term. And in that case, the relationship is much more important. So let's jump back here. So we need to collaborate with them, Bill says. And Fred says, right. We need to make sure everything we do and say in the negotiation, our tactics, help support the strategy of collaboration. So right here, we see that uh, Bill and Fred have chosen a very clear strategy. What is their strategy? Collaboration. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Bill says, this way, both sides will find the deal acceptable. 